Hello everyone, I'm reading this victim impact statement as I did at the end of Charlie's trial. There were some technical problems with the original video portion of the recording and the audio was not very clear. So I'm doing this so that one day my two grandchildren, Ben and Lincoln, can watch and listen to this victim impact statement on behalf of our Markel family. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Phil Markell. I'm Dan Markell's father. Dan, my only son, was born on October 9th, 1972, in Montreal, Quebec. During that time in Quebec, husbands were not allowed to actually be in the delivery room during the child's birth. However, since the obstetrician was a close friend of ours, I was allowed to experience the most amazing moments, the birth of my son. I will never forget the emergence of his head and then the shoulders of an NFL fullback, a boy of 10 pounds. There I was holding in my arms this gift of life, a bundle, my bundle of sheer joy. From the time he was a child, my son had tremendous energy, intelligence, and great warmth. Dan had a vibrant, fun-loving personality, and he lived life to the fullest. Dan loved to socialize, dance, cook, entertain, and play sports, and he dedicated himself wholeheartedly to everything that he did. He would always look to do his utmost to improve and achieve better results in every activity he, he participated in. <clears throat> the desire of improvement and commitment to excellence was a defining characteristic of his short life. I finally remember Dan taking, I fondly remember Dan taking Skiing, uh, taking Dan, I'm sorry, I fondly remember Danny, taking Danny skiing up the hills in the Laurentian Mountains where we lived when he was two years old. He rode up the mountain between my legs, holding on to the T-bar, and then coming down the hill, yelling with great joy, faster, Danny, faster. Then, as he grew a little older and he played hockey at the local parks, to improve his skating skills, he requested to take speed le skating lessons with a local coach from Russia who had this reputation of being a very tough coach. Dan persevered, and every, after every hockey lesson, he came off the ice with a red face and totally out of breath because he always gave it his all. At about the age of 13, Dan developed the idea that he was going to Harvard University. He discovered that the acceptance requirements for Harvard were not only good grades, but also work for the community and do charitable work. To achieve these goals, he revived his high school newspaper, he became the paper's newspapers editor and business manager. He performed charitable deeds. He volunteered in the community. And after years of hard work and determination, Danny was accepted to Harvard. Dan grad later graduated from Harvard, magna cum laude. He went on to study at Hebrew University in Jerusalem for one year. And then he earned a Master's of Philosophy in Political Theory from Emmanuel College at the University of Cambridge in England. He returned afterwards to Harvard Law School to earn his law degree and went on to become an extremely successful lawyer and in, an influential legal scholar. Then served as a law clerk for a federal judge. He worked as an associate at a prestigious law firm in uh, in Washington, D.C., and then he secured a prestigious teaching position at FSU College of Law. In just a few short years, 
then became full tenured law professor before the age of 41. He co-authored a book and published many articles in highly regarded law reviews, journals, and newspapers like the New York Times. <clears throat> Dan's work was influential when he gave lectures and presented at universities all around the world. Although Dan was fond of his Canadian roots, he was very dedicated to the FSU Law School and the Tallahassee community. He was recognized as a scholar who contributed and made a difference in this world. While Dan's career was important to him, family meant everything to Danny. His marriage produced two boys, Benjamin and Lincoln, who were his absolute world, the loves of his life. Dan arranged his entire life around these two boys. He would arrange his teaching schedule, travel plans, exercise, activities all around his desire to spend as much time as possible with the two boys. He, went, he would meet them for breakfast at their preschool. He would sit in the middle of a circle with Benjamin and Lincoln and all their classmates and tell them stories, read, sing songs, all this as they ate breakfast. <clears throat> Benjamin and Lincoln were his pride and joy and meant everything, everything to him. Danny made sure that he and the boys came to Montreal and Toronto to attend every family function and affair and visit with all the extended fa Markel family, including grandparents, uncles, aunts, and many numerous cousins. Despite the distance, Dan felt that the boys had to know and be a part of this family. Dan also made sure that he and the boys participated in the Tallahassee community and were involved with the local synagogue and neighborhood. Danny f left home at the young age of 17 to go to Harvard, but he always came home for summer vacation, for holidays, and all family functions. Danny and I, despite the fact that we lived quite far apart, regularly communicated by text, email, and phone calls. And despite the physical distance, as time moved on, we grew ever more closer. At Dan's suggestion, we would talk and have a meal together. At the appointed day and time, <clears throat> we each would prepare our meals, set our tables, and with a tablet in the middle, over Skype, we would sit together and enjoy each other's company for a couple of hours despite the actual distance. <clears throat> Dan's life was abruptly cut short, and he was forever taken from me, from his boys, and the rest of our family, and all his many friends and colleagues. My life has been in a total disarray since Danny's murder. Many nights I wake up in the middle of the night in a terrible sweat with thoughts of Dan's murder and all that has happened. There is not a single day in my life since Danny's death that in one way or another he does not enter my thoughts and I miss him with all my heart. I'm constantly reminded <clears throat> of Dan's murder and his absence. When I meet new people, the topic of discussion always comes up and they ask whether I have children, how do I respond? Is it, it's difficult to put into words the heinous acts that Dan took away from us and the unthinkable pain that I must live with every single day. Losing a son or a daughter is something I wish nobody, nobody should have to experience. It is not in the order of nature. <clears throat> Danny is never coming back. We continue to hope and pray for justice. The return to normalcy of seeing and playing a vital role in the lives of our two grandsons, Benjamin and Lincoln. 
<clears throat> it's been a number of years since I last wrote a victim impact statement sharing how Danny's death has affected me. Despite our persistent efforts, we still do not have a real relationship with Danny's sons, Ben and Lincoln. Visits are very limited <clears throat> and carefully controlled. For six years, we were denied any and all visits with the boys or any communication whatsoever. In the last two years, I've permitted two 60 to 90 minute supervised visits with them. This limited contact is incredibly painful and I feel like we have been cut out of their lives. Not only have I lost my son, but I have effectively lost two of my grandkids as well. Even their family names have been changed from Markel to Adelson. While we worked hard to help introduce a new bill in the state of Florida, known as the Markel Act, <clears throat> this gives grandparents important rights but unfortunately, our relationship with Ben and Lincoln has not been materially improved. As this bill was coming to fruition, there was a lot of negative publicity in the press and media about Dan's ex-wife, Wendy. In my opinion, <clears throat> Wendy was focused on improving her public image and as a result extended an invitation to Benjamin's Bar Mitzvah. Ruth and I were invited to attend only the ceremonial part of this important stage of a Jewish boy's life, and we were not invited to participate <clears throat> in any reception, reception typical of this type of celebration. But this, invita this invitation opened the door to one of the last limited visits described above. In order not to overwhelm Ben and Lincoln on this important day, we asked to arrange a meeting for the bar mitzvah, before the bar mitzvah in order to make things easier on the boys, who we haven't been allowed to visit in years. We were able to arrange a brief 90-minute supervised visit with Ben and Lincoln a few weeks before the bar mitzvah. However, Immediately after our brief visit, Charlie was arrested and Wendy rescinded our invitation to this bar mitzvah. <clears throat> At the time, she said that they were going to either postpone or completely cancel the bar mitzvah, but neither of these things happened. Instead, my understanding is the Adelsons went on to have the bar mitzvah ceremony and the party all without the Markel family's presence or participation. Missing out on this important moment in Ben's life was incredibly painful. After so many years <clears throat> without Danny, we had hoped to make progress in forging a consistent relationship with his sons, but this still has many challenges. <clears throat> This is the year that Lincoln turned six, 13, sorry, the age of bar mitzvah. As yet, we have not been informed if and when he will have a bar mitzvah, nor if we will be, be invited to participate in this very important time of Lincoln's life. I have very little hope that we will be allowed to participate this important cycle event. Danny's murder brought his life abruptly to an end for no sensible reason and has affected a countless number of people. The legal community is deprived of Dan's wisdom and ideas, which made the world a better place. Dan's students are deprived of experience of having Dan as a brilliant professor and caring mentor showing them 
a path to their future. Dan's colleagues can no longer benefit from his friendship, his insights, his scholarly discussions, and debates. Ruth and I have been deprived of our son, who was taken away from us so suddenly and totally against life's schedule. Ben and Lincoln must go through life without their father, who loved them with all his being. The boys have been deprived of their father's entire family. After Dan's murder, we have no idea of, of what these two boys know or have been told about Danny's death. I truly believe they've been brainwashed in all these years from the ages of three and four years of age to the present day. I also have no idea what the boys know of us, the Markell family, any history, and especially how much we all love them and how we wish they were an active part of our family. Both Ruth and I are approaching 80 years of age. This moment, at this moment, we are healthy but one does not know what tomorrow brings. The wheels of justice turn very, very slowly, but so far, at least, they are still turning. We are very, very grateful to the Tallahassee Law Enforcement, to the state attorney and all their staff, to all our relatives and friends, including the hundreds of Danny's friends and colleagues around the world, for their constant support over these long 10 years. To all the podcasters who more work so hard to keep alive this unbelievable story. We are still waiting for Benjamin and Lincoln to have a more normal relationship with the Markell family as we wait in pain and true anguish. The Adelson family, in particularly Charlie Adelson, has been a major cause of our heartbreak and the murder of our son, Danny, and the loss of our two grandsons. I have suffered tremendously, and we as a family continue to suffer. It is satisfying to see justice being done, and it would be appropriate to ask the maximum sentence for the perpetrators of Danny's murder. Thank you. Today is a good day.